Well, good morning. We're doing uh, SBC upper control arms on a 2006, I believe, GX470. Uh, this should be applicable to all of them. Some things that I have done to make this easier to start off. So let's do that. All right. We're going to do the driver's side first. Get your battery out of the way. Get your battery tray out of the way. And lastly, can you see... This is where that upper control arm bolt's got to travel to come out. So we're going to take this off. I believe that's a 10 millimeter. We're just going to get this this uh, little brace out of the way. That way we can get this upper control arm out. You do not have to remove your strut or any of that. Now I am. All of this is coming out. They were going with the Dobbinson's lift. But this upper control arm, take your brake line loose. 10 millimeter. I take it loose from here as well. And I'm actually going to remove my entire brake assembly. You do not have to do that to change the upper control arm. You do have to take this loose. So get it out of the way. All this is going to be moved just for my sake. You don't have to do that. I believe that's a 19 that you're going to be using. Yes, still a 19. Most everything on here is 17, 18, 19. 17 and 19 are the most common. But we're going to get that loose first. Then we're going to pop the spindle loose and uh, or get the get the spindle off of the upper control arm. All right, so brake comes off. I'll just put everything inside. I've already shown you guys how to do this. So just search Crutchfield Clan front brakes Lexus GX470 if you don't know how to get this stuff off, but it's just two 17 millimeter bolts on the back of the calipers. That 10 millimeter bolt right there on top of your uh, upper control arm, 12 millimeter right here on the spindle. Everything comes out of the way. You disconnect the ABS from back there. So everything's out of my way now. Super makes everything a little easier to get to. So now, what I'm gonna work on is getting this spindle loose. So be careful once it comes loose, this whole thing's gonna wanna come out. I've still got it connected to um, to the uh, sway bar, so shouldn't have too much uh, too much change there. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and get this cutter pin out and then uh, get this castle nut off. I believe that's a 17, and uh, I'm gonna work on getting it separated after that. All right, and just to make everything even easier for me, this is all coming out anyway because I'm doing all of this. So that sway bar would be gone. The tie rod end would be loose. Anyway, we're not doing, if I'm right, CV axle boots and all are good. I think the CV back axles are staying, but so I won't be pulling uh, all of this off of the axle itself. But now that the castle nut is off, I'm going to separate this. So we do have a puller. I don't have it with me. So what I'm going to do is... A little tap a root right here. Uh, you can put that castle nut back on so you don't screw these threads up. Since I'm not reusing this, it doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to put a little tap there. I've got a, a ball joint separating fork. I'm going to use it as well to see if I can just pop that out of there. Um, there's a puller. I wish I had it, but I don't. It would just basically push this back into, uh, back into the hole, separating it the spindle from that ball joint for the control arm. So this is all you're doing. You're getting this spindle, which is what connects to everything else here. I'm getting it loose. And the kids have decided to play in the water on the trampoline. So um, if that's what you're hearing. <laughs> so you're getting this loose from this ball joint. We're not gonna press it out because we're getting rid of this. This is coming out completely. So get that loose. All right, a few quick love taps. She's out, so. It didn't even take, I think, three or four swings and she come out. So there's your ball joint and here's your stock upper control arm. You see that it sprung up because it's it's been torqued, okay? So this is what it's designed to do is kind of hold everything. You're not getting too much travel up, down. It doesn't bottom out your shock. <coughs> All of this works in congruency. So next, 19 millimeter, 19 millimeter. This whole bolt runs the length. So that's why you gotta get the battery and stuff out of your way. So loosen it, get it off, and then work that thing through all the way. This this washer is gonna be in your way, so the washer is only gonna let you come out a little at a time. But uh, get that nut off the back, work your bolt out, and your control arm should be free. Well, this is interesting. I'm trying to run deals from afar at both locations right now. I'm trying to train a new salesman while I'm doing this, so this is fun. Uh, but let me turn you around. So. And my phone's about to die. Once once this is loose, this bolt, this nut, you're going to get it off. Get that washer. Uh, set them aside. You're not going to need them again. You will need... You'll have new washers. I think you'll reuse the nut and the, the long bolt. But get that loose. 
and then you're gonna work this bolt out. And uh, I, I don't have a good way to show you how to work it out. I will talk you through it. Um, I'm gonna get this one out, make sure there's nothing else that I'm forgetting to tell you in the meantime. But you're gonna work it out. This side will come loose first because the bolt will slide out of this part of the upper control arm. Then it'll continue to slide forward and then this part will be loose and we will be free. All right, back in here, you will need to take a, uh, just a, uh, a punch on the other end of this bolt. It'll kind of bend this little bit of metal right here. You see how the, it's hard to see, but that bolt head is flanged out and it runs into that metal right there. Um, then the last thing you've got to worry about is this. I'm gonna separate this, should be just a little pressure clip. I'm gonna take a screwdriver and just pop it out so that it's this wire doesn't get damaged and then pull it the rest of the way out. And we all naked under here. All right, so this is where your new one will mount through there. So what you're gonna have is your new upper control arm. And uh, SPC sends different settings on how to set this control arm. We're gonna put ours on setting D, I believe, which will give us plus two inches um, caster. So that's where we're gonna start. Hey, <laughs> there it went. <laughs> but I'll track that. That's your new one. So it goes in as such. This will be, you see this part? This is the part that helps change your caster. So whatever setting you set, this will do that. But we're gonna set ours here, which is setting D, which when installed will still give us some forward movement. And uh, hopefully give us what we need. Uh, but then I'm gonna let the alignment shop do their thing. Uh, that is your Zerk fitting on top you can grease this joint. Um, this upper control arm can be torqued while the vehicle is in the air. So I'm, uh, I'm gonna look up, make sure I got the right torque number on that. Um, but uh, this will go on after that. So let me get that on. I'm gonna show you how, see if there's anything else I run into along the way that I need to tell you. Other than that, I'm gonna put that other long frame bolt back through using the new washers and then you're gonna reuse the old nut, torque it to spec and then we'll put the ball joint and spindle back together. And just to show you that you can do it by yourself, I've had no help on that. So that nut or that washer faces in. This washer, turn it to face as such. It goes back on the OE nut goes back on. and the torque spec 85 foot pounds this can be torqued while it's in the air you don't have to suspend the spc up control arms like you would the oem ones so 85 foot pounds and then we'll work on getting your uh ball joint and everything in all right so this ball joint comes to you in with this washer and this nut on top we'll take them off so you can see how to adjust caster and camber your tire shop will probably do this, but this is the setting recommended if you want um, plus two inches of caster change. Uh, this is called the D setting for SPC. This rotates. You see and it locks in wherever you need it to lock in. What that'll do, this part goes up into here and locks in. So what I've done there is moved my spindle forward. You see that? So my caster is gonna be pushed forward this way. Okay, so the D setting. Let's put it on the D setting of where they recommend for a three inch lift to get plus two inches of caster, which is actually zero degrees on theirs. So this is zero degree. And I'm gonna give a shout out to Wilson View. I told you I would. Um, some SPC ball joints can be flipped. They can be mounted in or out for negative, adding more positive or negative camber. Uh, on this application, unfortunately for me, uh, I say unfortunately, thank you for pointing it out because you were correct on this app, this flat portion is going to face out actually, not the rounded portion. So logo and flat bar point out on the GX. Uh, this one is not one that you're gonna wanna rotate a full 180 to give you uh, the extra uh, outer camber. 
it's just not going to work on that application. So that is uh, just turn it. That's the only difference in anything that I showed you was that the uh, that this will be your orientation. Um, that is the SPC logo out and the rounded portion to the inside, flat portion to the outside. So just rotate what I just showed you and you'll be good to go. And thank you, Mr. Wilson View for that one. You see, I'm still gonna get some caster there. I'm gonna get some positive caster. It's gonna move me forward, all right? Because you see how that's, I have to move this to match up to that, all right? There's your Zerk fitting, but that washer and nut go on top. Let me do that. And once that washer and nut are on top, I can slide for my camber in and out. So your shop can adjust for camber here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reinstall. I'm gonna put this ball joint back into the spindle. It's got a castle nut and that castle nut, let me make sure I'm giving you the right numbers. And that new castle nut is gonna be torqued. The top ball joint nut, once it's all ready to go, like it's your, your caster and your camber are set, your shop's gonna torque that one to 150. Um, you don't have to torque it that high right now, but if you're gonna drive it, uh, get it as close as you can if you're gonna drive it to your shop. Hopefully you can trailer it. Um, but I believe it's 45 pounds. Yeah, the castle nut is torqued to 45 foot pounds um, and you can only tighten it further. You can tighten it further, but they say only until the supplied cotter pin can be installed. So tighten it as much as you can. The supplied cotter pin goes in. Um, this is not gonna change. So once this and this is together, and I'll go ahead and do that so you can see. So I went ahead and put the castle nut on. Tighten it to 45 and I couldn't quite get the cotter pin in yet. So tighten it just a touch more, cotter pin slid in. All right, at this point, see I'm still loose. All right, so 45, at this point, Zerk fitting. I'm gonna put in the grease that they call for, I think it's five to 10 squirts, and then they call for about every time you do an oil change, re-grease this, five to 10 squirts. Um, I can't remember the name of it, but anyway, um, just your, I think it's just gonna be the regular wheel bearing grease, but I'll make sure that that's what they call for. They may call for a different grease, but five to 10 squirts, and you're gonna take, that's an inch and a quarter. This was a 22 on that castle nut. The original castle nut was a 19. The frame bolt to chassis or whatever through the, the long bolt through the back's 19 on both ends. And uh, I'm gonna set this about where I like it. I know I'm sitting out a little bit right now. I'm gonna loosen it back. Just to show you, it's kind of tight, so I'm gonna loosen it. And then at that point, I can change all of these angles based on the, uh, the lift that I've put in and the wheel and tire setup that I've put in, and they can then lock it into 150 pounds there. So I'm gonna go ahead and grease this. I'm gonna tighten it up, but not all the way, because I'm gonna trailer this to my tire shop so that they can, once I've put the Dobinson's lift in and all of that, then uh, they can fine tune this for me and have a good alignment. If you're gonna put a full three inch lift in the front and you wanna make full clearance, get the SPC upper control arms. They're gonna make your life a lot easier. Um, you're gonna get the clearance you need. You're gonna be able to get the caster and camber you need to be able to actually align it correctly. You can work without one of these, but it's never gonna get the perfect alignment without going with a new upper control arm. The OEM Lexus one is just not gonna fit. So do that, put your truck back together as far as your, if you've taken your sway bar off, your brakes, whatever, put them back on. If you were just doing the upper control arms, you're done on the driver's side. Do the passenger side, same way. Nothing changes except you got a couple other things to make clearance on as far as around your power steering on that side. And once you've made clearance, you're good to go. Uh, I think there's one wire in the way and the rest are just hoses. You can wiggle that that uh, that bolt around. So I hope this helps. If you got questions, as always, throw them in the comments. Uh, like, subscribe, share, all that fun stuff. It helps us out. We're heading towards 3,000 subscribers. We're at something about 2,100, maybe. Real close. So we're hoping to hit 3,000 real quick and we'll have another big giveaway. Still waiting to, we haven't even drawn yet for the uh, upper control arm giveaway from Dobinson's from the 2,000 yet. So y'all are moving us on up really quick. We really appreciate it. That guy is tired of the trampoline and the water. He's ready to go inside. We're out of here.